Hello everybody, Reggie Time here with a later than expected start to the week video. Um, yesterday um, I was working longer hours than usual and when I came home my internet was fucked, it was down, my hub was orange and purple for hours and hours. Um, I managed to get on the internet by tethering my laptop to my mobile phone but I didn't want to play poker on such a weak connection so um we didn't play so we're, we're on it today it's 9 30 in the a.m um, i'm going to be playing for i've been playing already for about an hour i'm going to be playing for another 45 minutes to an hour before i take a break so we're going to try and capture some try and capture some footage i guess please hit the like and um, share subscribe if i was you i would um watch this video on 1.5x speed or 2x speed on YouTube because I've been playing a lot tighter lately. I've been getting a lot of pretty decent results. Um, if you want to see how my results for the month have been so far, then skip to near the end of the video because I'm going to be looking at it in a little bit, a little bit more detail at the end. Not a lot of detail to be had, but there's going to be like, at least you're going to see how my results and volume have been so far. So I didn't play poker at all on Monday. Um, I didn't play poker at all on Sunday. Well, I played a little bit on Sunday, but we were, well, say we. My wife was still getting on with a lot of like the decorating and renovations to the house that we're doing. We're nearly finished now, thankfully. We're, um, we got the carpet laid in the front room yesterday. We're getting the um, stairs and landing carpet laid on Thursday. And then we're getting the hall flooring laid sometime in the next few days uh, when it arrives and then we're done oh sorry we need to put some curtain poles up and hang the curtains but we're nearly there it's been a longer than expected project it's gone over time it's gone over budget but it's going to look pretty fucking nice when it's done so um can't complain too much and i've not had to get too heavily involved in the actual work so i can't complain it's been um it's upset my grind a little bit. It's certainly limited how much poker I can play. Um, but um, no, we can't complain. It's looking really good and it's going to look very good when finished. So hats off to the wife, I suppose. She's done a good job. Um, she hasn't done a great job managing the project. As I say, because the timing's not been great. But the work's been done to a good standard. Well, a high standard. And um, yeah, we're very pleased with it. Talk about high standards. My poker's been a pretty high standard so far this month. Been very nitty. Um, I've actually got some really interesting folds that I want to go over in a video at some point, but I haven't got enough of them yet. Once I get um, enough interesting folds or interesting calls, I'm going to do a, a little review video too. I'll only need five or six hands because I'd like to talk to them. I'd like to talk about each hand in not in massive depth, but talk about my thought processes in a little bit of depth because I've received some criticism for the folds when I posted them and I think the criticism was, I've received has been fair. Um, but um, I'm going to make a video where I properly explain my thought processes for making the folds. Not all of them have been everything to do with just the EV of the situation. It's been more to do with like the overall more holistic picture of my grind so um yep yeah, there'll be some fishy analysis and fishy reasons for doing certain things and um i think you guys you might tear your hair out but it'll certainly give you hopefully some incentivization to to comment and, and get involved a little bit more make the channel a little bit more interactive which is what i always like but rarely actually achieve um cat nine diamonds here with a whale in the Big blind, I think we can easily peel here. And just keeping checking with the nine, no real good reason to bet with our mediocre kicker. We have some reasonable showdown value, but not a huge amount of actual value to bet our hand. Now we have a very good reason to bet our hand. We go pretty big here. Um, hope not to get raised, hope to get called. <laughs> 
if you do see a hand where you don't like what I did or you'd like me to explain why I did what I did if I didn't explain it very well in the video then um, please do um, ask in the comments section but please do timestamp to it or give a timing so I can get to it uh, sometimes people will be like oh you folded X Y and Z why did you do that and I've no idea if it's been in like minute 3 or minute 37 or whatever and it's um, I don't remember after I've played the hands you know, usually don't remember unless it's been a significant hand and the major talking point in the video um, but sometimes there'll be things that you see that you're like oh that was weird. Sometimes it'll just be a lack of concentration from me. Sometimes there'll be a reason I haven't explained very well. Uh, but if there is anything you're not sure of, then get the comment section. Work me hard. Um, and if you link, or if you I put a timestamp to the hand in some way or other, if you don't know how to do the link bit so I can click it and it takes me straight to it, just tell me approximately what time the hand starts in the video on which table. And um, yeah, I will absolutely respond and give you my thoughts do we need to uh, do we need to bet here i don't think we do and we can um take one off maybe encourage some probes on the turn from weaker hands not get blown off our equity if we get check raised etc and that seems like a pretty sweet river I'm gonna go pretty big here and hope not to get raised tons of worse hands can call straights etc Two pairs sets. Don't love three betting. Thirty-two slash tens with Ace King, but we are, and we're going to get it in, and we're going to be behind if we do get it in most of the time. Pre-flop, but Ace King, what are we going to do? Oh, he's fucking made it small. We are absolutely toast here. Too late now, of course. It's too late now, but we are brown bread in this hand. I just hope we have at least one over. No, we don't. We don't. Never mind. The minute he made that sizing, I'd have been more, I'd have been happier. Had the jam come rather than um, rather than that particular sizing, but never mind. I mean, when do 32 tens ever do them stupid click back sizes and just not have the nuts? Um, trivial call here against a whale. Up against a draw. Give him the chance to run it twice if he wants because, well, he hasn't. He's gone for it. And he immediately gets there, which is quite frustrating. So that's. Well, that's not really cool, though. Two situations where there's nothing we can do that have gone against us now. <laughs> Didn't realise we flopped two pairs here. I think it's a little bit too late to raise. And then we get a shit run out. Hope to be good. Expect not to be though. And we were good. I think I was winning this session before those two hands. I wasn't winning much because I got in a $70 hole early. Then I think I climbed out of it and I think we've just um, hopped back in. In our wee case. Yeah, so I think going forward, especially with my plans to um 
play quite a bit tighter. I think I'd like to um, do more review videos than, than live play videos. I think that's a, a reasonable idea. I mean, more interesting for you guys. Won't get to demonstrate how good the games are, which is part of the reason for making my videos, but I think they'd be more interesting. And, and given that I'm well, more than hopeful I'm going to be putting good volume in this week. I would hope that over the course of like maybe three or four days, I'll have enough interesting hands, a genuinely interesting hands to review, not just boring coolers or look at me, I just sacked a whale with the set or whatever. Um, what are we going to do here with the tens? And a limp under the gun. All these players coming in. I'm just going to set mine, I think. I really want to squeeze and then be forced to fold. When we have a situation where if we flop a set multi-way, we can hopefully felt somebody. And it's not so nice now we are heavily multi-way. And then this guy's just donked into four players. I think I'm going to make one of the folds that you guys all hate in this spot. And he's already betting five dollars. There's gonna be not that many turns that we like, and he's probably gonna bet much bigger. Gonna make a pretty tight fold. Probably a very tight fold. But I think what I've been doing really well this month, and it can be frustrating, it can be it can be difficult sometimes, is just doing a really good job of like um when I'm not sure about situations and I'm uncomfortable, getting away from them early and kind of like not protecting my stacks, I'm not playing a tournament, but protecting my money and just not putting too much money in where I've no fucking clue where I'm at or what I'm doing with, with like, you know, am I calling here? Why am I calling here? And, you know, um, or why am I bluffing here? Why am I, why am I betting here? And just trying to be a lot more careful, I guess in marginal situations against passive opponents who are showing a willingness to put lots of chips in the pot. Of course there was some, there's some bluffing in these games. I'm not saying that nobody bluffs, but bluffing frequencies are, or seem to be, pretty low in relation to value bets. Now, sometimes people will overplay value hands and... Um, and just to put too much money in with the second best hand aggressively, you know, they'll have an overpair, but it'll be a weak overpair and just go bomb, bomb, bomb in a way that almost ensures they rarely get caught by worse hands. And I'm maybe overfolding slightly in those spots and, you know, like folding winners against people who are almost over representing the value hands. But um, I'm, I'm willing to cope with that and I'll explain more why in. Um, future videos when I'm doing the reviews but a lot of it's just to do with uh, wanting to keep an even kill with a mental game and not you know embrace or not get involved in like too many swings not because like the financial swings bother me um in terms of like oh no I've lost some money just in in terms of like how it affects my motivation to grind if I'm just have like a you know a few sessions where I know I've made a few shitty sloppy mistakes and oh, I'm like, fucking hell, I don't want to play now. And um, it just puts me off playing, makes me not want to play. So um, even if sometimes, you know, I'm making a few slightly like losing folds in spots where I should be calling, etc., or maybe not taking the occasional bluff spot that I think might work, but I choose not to take it. So I'm like I'm sacrificing some EV with my play. I'm fully aware of that. But if that sacrificing that EV enables my mental game to stay super solid and allows me to put an extra 25 to 30 hours a month in because I'm, you know, always keen to play, then the EV I'm sacrificing in those spots is going to be more than made up for by the extra hours that I'm putting in at the table because I'm not, I don't get fed up with the game, I don't get pissed off with the game, I don't get pissed off with myself. So um, that's the broadly the reasons why I'm doing these things. I know some of the things I'm doing could be better. 
but it's usually just in like pretty close marginal spots where there isn't much EV difference whether I do do a particular thing or do the opposite. So in terms of EV, I'm, I'm sacrificing small amounts of EV here and there, but that's allowing me the mental stamina to put in much longer sessions uh, and play more times per week because I'm I'm not I don't get myself as fed up I don't get enough funk well I can't be fucking ass you're playing shit or you know you, you things you're not doing things right so don't fucking play Reg just sit and watch YouTube for six hours instead I'm trying to cut that stuff out so it's it's a mental game leak basically that I need to work on because obviously ideally you're going to be putting lots of hours in and playing your absolute best all the time now is that realistic no um, we're not going to play our best all of the time. So at the minute, I'm kind of like sacrificing EV for volume, I guess is the simplest way of putting it. But eventually, we want to get to the point where we're getting good volume and we're sacrificing as little EV as possible to get it. So there you go. That's, that's why I'm doing certain things at the moment. Um, She's already starting to feel a little bit thin multi-way, but we need to bet our hand. We have a decision on the turn here now. Do we just bet and commit? Do we check and bluff catch rivers? I think given we've called a C bet multi-way, I'm going to give him credit for having a slightly stronger range. But we clearly can't take this line of fold rivers, so we're going to have to fold call here. And I don't like he's instantly bet huge. Five six has got there too. This is a size we can't call. If he bet smaller, we'd have had a cry call. I think against that size, then I'm comfortable folding. The obvious draw got there. Jack nine got there too. Not the yes, Jack nine, but often on that flop. Better top pairs, two pairs. Lots of ways we can be beat there. Not a huge amount of ways we can be winning. Unless he's just randomly airballing after floating, which is not really a thing very often. I was ready to call there until he just like snap potted it then. If he's bluffing us then good for him. Okay, only opens 21% from the button, or only steals 21%. It's going to make another one of those tight folds. It's going to be a common theme. Could have considered betting back, checking back there with one of the weaker aces we're going to have in this situation. But there is a fish in the small blind. A nice clean turn card, please. It's not a terrible turn card. Again, do we do we bet here to charge draws, and do we check back and call safe rivers? This guy doesn't fold very often to see bets, so we're going to make a bet fold on the turn. He calls and um, we're not betting this river i think it's going to be too thin now queen seven happy days that was a indeed a nice flop and turn for us and uh, we get dunked into here just let the second pair go again could be folding the best hand but it's not a particularly attractive situation in general second pair Facing a dunk bet, even though the guy's short stacked and he's a whale, we're, you know, we're going to find better spots against him pretty quickly, I would imagine. Again, just going to fold top pair over here without no kicker.
not see but an ace queen on this board against two opponents. So I know there'll be lots of you now, if you haven't already turned off, will be like, wow, this guy's fucking tight, he's nitty, he's shit. Um, I've been having that observation aimed at me for a long time now. And again, I think in many ways it's it's a fair opinion to take. But um, I can pretty much guarantee you at the end of the month, when we do the end of the month review, um, or not review, but when we look at my results... I'll be posting, oops, I'll be posting good numbers and a good win rate, for sure. You know, it's just almost impossible playing the style I'm currently playing to have a losing month if you put the volume in, in these like pretty soft games. As I said earlier, maximising my EV, am I maximising my EV? Probably not, but... You know, I'm not, not going to lose a whole amount of sleep over that. If come the end of the month, I put... 25 to 30,000 hands in and I've won at around 10 bigs 100. I'm not going to complain too much if I can if I can do this and win 30 binds a month, 25 to 30 binds a month, relatively stress-free. I'll take the fact that I'm not playing um, A-star theoretically superb poker. I'll just take it and I'll take the criticism that comes with it. Dead. And we just get a big three bets so we can go with a larger open and not fear being three bets. So much my button open size, oh my steel sizes all right even my raised sizes um they're, they're quite variable these days based on the strength of my hand and who's to go behind me it's exploitable as fuck and i'm not worried about it if i've got a playable hand and two aggressive or two or three aggressive players to go behind me i'll be opening it small if i've got a very good hand and i've got aggressive players behind me i'll be opening it large and obviously we've got a very good hand and well basically i'm opening all my good hands large and then um, some of my more marginal holdings I'm opening smaller with a view to folding to three bets versus tight passive players and defending versus three bets from more aggressive players again super exploitable not too worried I'm going to get exploited by many players some will pick up on it for sure there'll be some good players who are like oh I know what you're doing here and I'm just going to exploit it and if that happens and I notice it's starting to happen, I can then readjust. Or I can just say, oh, well, good for you. You figured it out. I'm not going to change my overall strategy just for one player. thinking of get, getting a new larger monitor if any of you guys know of any like really cool large monitors out there my current monitor is probably i don't know 20 odd inches i think 
quite like a bigger one, but my track record um, purchasing equipment, be it microphones or, well, yeah, just microphones, I guess. But my basically my purchasing of equipment is, is like I'm a massive fish. I'd really quite, I think I'd like a curved monitor, quite a large curved monitor. Um, not sure how much I'm willing to spend. I discussed it with my wife. She's already objecting, um, saying she doesn't want a big fat fuck off monitor um, in a newly decorated front room. But ultimately, if I want one, I'll just fucking get one. So we've got this guy here who's min raised under the gun. His C-bet's 15% and his C-bet full pot. I don't care, we've got a pair and a good shot. We're folding. So I think if we don't, if nothing good happens in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to be booking a losing session this morning. It should be a disappointing start to my week, but I'm sure I'll overcome it. Better in the king queen here if our friend opens. I mean, we want to keep this guy in, but not that much. And we don't want a three bet king queen. I think we'd maybe flat with king queen suited, three bet king queen off. This guy is turbo called in the big blind. Um, I think we have a relatively easy C bet and then shut down if called. And get the job done there. Wow, look at that. Ah, we're going to fold. If this isn't a monster, I'll be very, very surprised. Fucking hilarious if we found the fold. Wow, only ace jack. It's interesting that he's making it like almost 7x from that position with just ace jack suited. Rooting for the nine seed, of course. Ah, they're running it three times. That's unfortunate. Let's hope the nines win two of them. They've won two of them so far. Can you sweep? No, the nines are not going to sweep. Oh, they might sweep. No, they're not going to sweep. Not set man in with the threes here. I think it's not unreasonable chance this guy is limp jamming versus that sizing. Or limp folding, whatever. <laughs> Start off with a small C bet here versus a pink tack in the big blind. He calls and we turn some showdown value. Let's hope he doesn't donk because that would irritate me. Kind of knew that might be coming. <sighs> Oh, 
Whatever, dude. Whatever. Oh, we'd have got there. Didn't want the rabbit there. Didn't want the rabbit. As it happened, we would just have chopped, given what the river was. So, I'm massively fed up. This guy's gone with a three bet that's just too small. So we're going to have to defend our Jack Queen and then hope to flop some good equity. Not think that's going to be good enough equity for me to want to continue when he bombs C bets. Doesn't C bet at all. Still not convinced. Certainly can't bet. And now we just have a decision. Do we... I think we're going to, like, block here and then call, I think. I think that's the line. So he might want to try and get to showdown with, like, his ace highs. And now I've blocked, he might just do something silly. But he didn't, unfortunately. And with the fat ice over here, with the aces. We'll take three bets. We'll take a three bet, sir. Didn't get the three bet. We'll take the limp raise or the three bet. Come on, guys. One of you is... Right, you're not three betting. Wow, the only guy who didn't stay in the pot was the original limper. I'm not liking how this board is turning out. I'm going to be checking back and calling on that particular river and now we're just going to bet small and try and get a hero call from something check raise will be sick here doesn't come there Won't be sea betting on this table into two fish. And we'll just be folding. Mm. 
We block Jack Nine. We don't block Spades. We also block King Jack, which might bluff. Felt a tiny bit too thin there to bet. I think it's, again, it's probably should be a bet though in hindsight, but maybe that's just me. Playing results. We don't know what you check back with. And maybe you check back with a maid hand. Maybe you check back with a misdraw. Tough what we can do work with. Wow. Well, well, well. Don't think I can find a fold here. Now we might have to on the river. Yeah, we have to now. Do we? Yeah, now he's called two. There's a strong argument could be made for betting the flop there with the ace three of diamonds, but we had top pair, we had a big draw, and we had position. So I think like we don't need to be betting our nut flush draws and our top pairs of weak kickers. There's other hands there that we can that want to bet more than that particular hand, even though we maybe would have chopped or won the hand had we managed to make him a fold. On the flop. Well, that, I think we're just playing results there by going down that thought route. Not falling against this fellow. Easily have the best hand here. Chop it up, that's unfortunate. I'm pretty confident that he didn't have anything there. Unfortunately, he had something that could chop with us. Grow reg in the big blinds, so we're going to go with our smaller sizing. Also helps that the guy we want to play a pot with here has a smaller stack, so we don't need to raise this big. Fire a second street here against this guy. If he clings on with a 10, then he just gets the win on the river. Mm. That is a straddle. So we're going to open. Snap call by our friend here, which is not so t at all surprising. Got a pretty good flop. We're going to be stacking off here on this board with this SPR. We're not going to mess around with our sizing, we're just going to make it nice and chunky. This guy going with a monster open size again. Mr. Tilt. 
think you need this one, don't you? You're not orange, mate. You're not orange. <clears throat> You're blue. Massive three bet comes in from a guy who only three bets three percent. So it's Jack's a very happy fold. I thought I'd click that down then. I thought I'd minute three. Turns out a minute three and a half. Again, it's just too small. Sadly, this time we're going to have to concede to him. So I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop recording and we'll just pause the recording because at the end of the video, I do want to take a look at how we're doing for the month so far, given that we're just over a week in. <clears throat> and I promise that to you guys, but I don't want to try and do that whilst I'm playing. It'll just get too messy. So I think we'll pause now, given we haven't got anything playable. And then um, well, I'll pause the recording. Oh, well, no, I won't. Because we have a very, very pretty hand. I don't give a fuck that he's got a 3% 3 bet. This is going in with joy. And we are in a coin flip. Which we are not going to win. So definitely booked a losing start to the week. That's almost certain, unless after I stop recording, we somehow turn it around. But we're going to leave it there. And um, yeah, in about a second for you guys, you'll start to see, you'll see the my results so far this month. So here we are with the results section. We go into here, we click the career. And for the day, we're down 40, which I'll take given how we didn't didn't run too great. And for the month, we are up 284. So how many hands is that approximately? 450, um, call it 850. So that's 1300, 2100, 2600. Call that 3,400. Then we had the weekend where we didn't do much. 3,500. So we've got about 4,300 hands. And we are up, if we say 60 and L is our average buy-in. Uh, there is some 40 and L in there. But if we say 60 and L, we're up. Four buy-ins. So we're going at around 10. 10 or so, big as 100. Which I think 10 big blinds 100 is a fair assumption of my win rate in these games so pretty pleased with that and we've got like what do we say four thousand hands or so and i think i can improve well and i don't think i can i know i'll improve on that for the rest of the month so we're looking at maybe 
getting 24,000 hands in at 10 bigs 100 at 60 and L, which is do 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 do. What the fuck's that? 24. Get the calculator out. Let's get the calculator out. 24 times 60. Yeah, so look at 1400 estimated earnings plus maybe 200 rate right back. So if I make 1500 um, Aussie dollars in a month, I'll be more than happy with that for my grind. Uh, anything more is a bonus, anything less is like. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's no way we're going to lose, not a chance. And um, hopefully we're going to we're going to win a fair amount. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. We're going to definitely try and do some more um, hand reviews, strategy reviews of it genuinely interesting hands. So keep your eyes peeled for those. I'll be back Thursday or Friday with another video. Until then, have a good week everyone. Take care and bye-bye for now.